Thank you very much for coming. This is the Drupal Local Dev Survey results. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit faster here because I've got a fair bit to cover through. So I hope you're all enjoying your Drupal South experience so far. I especially hope you enjoyed the Splash Awards last night. I am very sadly no longer in my tuxedo. I was told in no uncertain terms that it could not be worn two days in a row, um, which I'm very sad about. So welcome today, welcome to day two. For those of you that I haven't been lucky enough to meet yet, my name is Mike Richardson. I'm the managing director and co-founder of a hosting provider called Ironstar. And I'm also the treasurer on the Drupal South Steering Committee, so working to help bring you this event. I really, really hope that you're enjoying it. Um, Ironstar, I've just got to do the quick plug, is a managed Drupal hosting company working with our partners on mission critical sites. Our focus is on providing the highest levels of support and security for sites that absolutely need to be online and protected. If that sounds like your site or your sites, um, please have a chat because I'm pretty confident we could be doing a good job for you. Now, with that out of the way, this is announcing the 2023 Drupal Local Dev Survey results. And just in case you're in the wrong room, there are some other really good talks at the moment. So thank you for choosing to be here. Uh, this survey was started in 2018 and run in 2019 and 2020 by Jeff Geeling and Chris Urban, who are ex Acquia and sadly no longer heavily involved in the Drupal community. Uh, Chris has moved on to program management at a consultancy called Confluent. Um, and Jeff is a full-time YouTuber with nearly half a million subscribers, um, mostly working on Raspberry Pis. So these surveys focus on asking Drupal developers all over the world about the tools, hosts, and processes they use to build great Drupal websites. Um, I found the data from these surveys in previous years to be really, really helpful. We host Drupal websites, we build tools for Drupal developers, um, and the insights that this offered were really useful. And this year I found myself wanting to get those insights again, something a little bit more up to date. Um, and I reached out to, to Chris and Jeff to ask if there is an intention to do this again. They said no. So I asked if they would mind if I took over and started doing that from this year. And they very graciously gave me the all clear to do so. Um, so the survey was also translated into three languages this time for the first time. Um, so Drupal, Drupal is a very English centric tool. Um, and I felt that it was important to try and get better quality of data by uh, getting this into as many other languages as we could and allowing respondents who will use English in their daily life for working with Drupal because I don't think that you can without a little bit of English skill. But I felt we might get more responses and better responses if we offered translated versions. And that certainly seemed to be the case. So I want to take a moment to really thank um, our, our translators, Maureen Gandhi from Platform, who is also head of the Drupal, the, the, the Drupal, I can't remember the exact word for it, but she's president of what is effectively a Drupal community for all of France. So she provided the French translation. Our very own Jimmy Can uh, from Ironstar, who provided the Japanese translation. And Chris Wu, uh, who works at the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology, who provided the traditional Chinese translation. So thank you to all three of our translators. There was a lot of work that went into that. So in 2023, uh, we received 829 responses from 96 different countries. Um, we had responses from places like Ethiopia, Albania, Costa Rica, Vietnam, and Cuba, as well as many of the countries that you'd expect to see. Um, I was very nervous when I put the, the survey up for the first time and announced it on Twitter, and um, I, I was like, okay, if I, get, if I get 50 responses, that's enough to be useful. If I get 100 responses, that's st statistically significant. Um, all the responses being in Australia came in overnight or nearly all of them. So every morning for me waking up was really, really exciting for the first couple of weeks because I'd, I'd think like I'd wake up and have maybe a dozen responses and I'd wake up the next day with 200 and it was just overwhelming um, the reach that it had. And, and I do definitely want to take a moment to thank um, everyone, not just who completed the survey, but who shared the survey and helped promote it. Um, and, in, and that includes companies like uh, Acquia, Platform.sh, and Amazy, developers of Lando and DDEV, um, the Drupal Association themselves who published it on their Twitter and in their newsletter, um, and uh, many, many others. So the response is pretty consistent with previous years. Um, we had 829 responses this year. In 2020, I believe they had just over 1,000, sorry, they had 600 responses in 2020 and just over a thousand responses in 2019. So slightly uh, better than 2020, but 2020 survey kicked off right around the time that COVID kicked off. So read into that what you like. Um, you can see overwhelmingly the responses that we had 
were from the United States. Um, and then countries like France, India, and United Kingdom. Australia rated quite highly. Um, Australia is the 10th highest contributor to Drupal by country as of, I think, 2021. Um, so that's slightly overrepresented, um, but that's probably because I'm Australian and I bothered everybody in Australia that I knew. Can you throw your hand up if you, if you completed the survey? All right, wonderful. Um, throw your hand up if you didn't know about the survey. A lot of you. Wow, okay, interesting. I have to find out how to reach you next year. Um, so 42 responses from Australia and nine from New Zealand. Uh, and we asked respondents, including, including yourself, how many Drupal developers work in your current company. And the intention here was to gauge how many large organizations are working with Drupal and what proportion of Drupal devs are in smaller companies or even working solo. And so out of these 829 responses, nearly 150 are working on their own. And keep that in mind because that will influence some of the other data that we'll look at. Um, the majority, oh, sorry, the largest cohort is those users working in teams of 25 or more. That's more than 25 Drupal developers in one organization, which is astounding to me. So that's really interesting. Um, we asked developers which tools they use to provision and manage their local development environments. As you might expect, Lando and DDEV featured very, very heavily. Um, it's also worth noting that a lot of developers use more than one tool, presumably because different projects, maybe in different consultancy or different teams, are geared for Lando, while another project in a different team might be geared for DDEV. Um, I was initially surprised to see DDEV win out overall. Um, my own experience is that there are a great deal more Lando users that I deal with day to day amongst our customer base. And actually that was borne out by the data as well because in Australia and New Zealand, Lando is the more popular tool and DDEV is the more popular tool in the US. And if you remember back to the number of responses we got from the US, um, that makes a lot more sense that DDEV would edge out overall if it's the more popular tool in North America, Spain, Germany, Czech, Czech Republic, um, Austria, I think Italy there as well. So very, very popular and Ethiopia. Um, so uh, it was also inter interesting to see that DDEV seems to be slightly more popular within larger teams. Um, it took me a good five minutes to somehow wrap my head around how to analyze this, but you'll sort of see the, the blues are a little bit darker on the right-hand side for DDEV and a little bit darker on the left-hand side for Lando. Um, Again, this might be a reflection that there were more responses for the US and DDEV is more popular in the US and the US has larger Drupal teams. Uh, we asked people if they thought they'd be using their preferred local environment manager in 12 months time. 86% said uh, yes, and the remaining 14% answered either maybe or no. Um, in this group, the group that said no, we saw that the users most likely to switch their local environment manager we're using Lando, DDEV, or some kind of LAMP, WAMP stack. Um, on the surface, that might seem like Lando users are more likely to switch than DDEV users, but when you look at the number of users, it ends up being about 7% of users who use Lando may switch, and 12% of users who use DDEV may switch. Um, so although DDEV may be the more popular tool, there might be a little bit more interest in other tools from that cohort. Um, in per capita terms, it's mostly bad news for Docker for Drupal and Doxel, who had a total of 83 and 87 users respectively, and about a third of those user bases are planning to switch or may switch in the next year. Uh, so, um, we asked some questions around Docker usage. Uh, about 70% of respondents are using some variation of container-based uh, local environment manager. Lando, DDEV, and so on. Um, the, the, the question that we asked, I wanted to try and gauge, as you understand Docker more, do you think that Docker is more important for local development or less important? Some of these tools like Lando and DDEV make it possible for you to use them without understanding Docker and without knowing how. So we asked the question, how comfortable are you working with Docker? Um, and that was effectively, uh, sorry, have I skipped? Yeah, so how comfortable are you working with Docker? Uh, oh, sorry, do you think it's important to understand how Docker works to be a Drupal dev? Uh, slight majority said, yes, we do. So we wanted to find out, do those users who think it's important understand it more than the users who don't? And that's this graph here. So on the left-hand side, you can see 
uh, we've, got a, we've got the users who think it is important versus the users who think it's not important. And on the right-hand side here, you've got their uh, comfort level in Docker doing certain different tasks. So the most complex task, the example we gave, was using Docker in CI CD. The simple task is basic task, Docker up, Docker stop, so on, or Docker run. Um, so there wasn't really any difference here. I was hoping for something more insightful, but the, the takeaway seems to be, if you're comfortable with Docker, you think Docker is important to know. If you're uncomfortable with Docker, you think Docker is important to know. So um, I wanted that to be more dramatic than it ended up being. Uh, in terms of operating system usage, 56% um, uh, of users are on Macs, Linux with 29%, and Windows with 15%. It's worth pointing out that a fairly large chunk of the Windows users took the time to point out that they're using WSL on, on Windows. So they're running Linux in Windows. Um, who here is developing on Windows? Can you keep your hand up if you're doing it by choice? Okay, all right, interesting. Are you using WSL? Yes, yes? Okay, everyone, everyone on Windows is using WSL. Two of the three Windows users who are in the room are there because they want to be, which is really good. Um, if we look at uh, the, the, the way it breaks down by more specific versions, I didn't ask for specific versions of Mac OS because um, I didn't think it would really matter. Within two months of Mac OS being released, 90% of people are, have, have updated. Um, there are more Windows 10 users than Windows 11. There are vastly more Debian-based Linux users than anything else. Who is developing on Linux? Okay, three. All right, so same number of Linux and Windows users here. Very interesting. I'm sure that changes by uh, you know, the, the, the country that you're in, the economic status of that country, like how easy it is to afford a Mac versus how easy it is to afford a Linux laptop and so on. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Uh, and we also asked users what IDE or editor they use. We asked the question, what is the primary IDE that you use? We got a lot of feedback that people wanted to specify more than one. Overwhelmingly, this is the, the comment that we got more than any other comment in the survey was, I use more than one IDE. I want to be able to say that I use more than one IDE. Um, so PHP Storm is still the IDE of choice, very closely followed by VS Code. There were three VS Codium users, which is the very open source version of VS Code. Um, and it would have been nice to see a little bit more adoption for that. Um, from my own little bubble, I would have expected to see more Vim slash NeoVim users. Um, I've seen a few people switch lately. Um, it's what I use, and in my little, my little bubble, I thought we'd see more, but it was only 3% of respondents. Um, when we compare that to previous years, 2019 in blue, 2020 in red, 2023 this year's survey in yellow, you can see that the change in market share is really PHP Storm and VS Code taking market share away from the smaller editors. What future that means for, um, for, for those smaller editors, I don't really know, um, but it's interesting to see that, yeah, VS Code and PHP Storm aren't really taking users away from each other, they're taking users away from other platforms. Uh, we asked some questions about quality assurance. We asked which quality assurance controls teams were using, um, and uh, keeping mostly the same answers that were found in the 2020 survey. So for example, this nothing wing it, fingers crossed, um, fingers crossed, that's not me, that's, that's, that's um, Jeff and Chris. Uh, so I was initially surprised that only 65% of respondents are even doing peer code reviews, but then I remembered that 17% of responses are solo devs. So that makes a little bit more sense in that context. Also worth noting is when compared to previous, when compared to the 2020 data, our quality controls have improved quite significantly. 40% um, peer code reviews in 2020 versus 65% in 2023. Um, so that's really great to see, although there is a small uptick in responses for those who are just winging it. Um, there were also some really great answers like chaos and madness and everything else, because there was a free form option there. Um, so we asked respondents if they'd feel like they'd be working with Drupal one year from now, with 1% saying no and 95% uh, saying maybe. Um, I don't know if that's a high number or not. This question hasn't been asked in previous years. Uh, 
Is there anyone here who is thinking they might not be working with Drupal in a year? One, okay, interesting. You're not working with Drupal that much at the moment though, are you? No, okay. Um, so I kind of would have expected that at a, at a Drupal conference, um, but it is interesting. I don't know if that number represents a lot. I don't know how it compares to other things, like how many Laravel developers are thinking of moving on or how many WordPress developers are thinking of moving on. Um, but uh, that was interesting nonetheless. I wanted to see if there was a potential reason for this. I can't quite see my slides on this little screen, which is why I keep turning away, and I'm sorry if that cuts off the audio. Um, I wanted to see if there was some tool that these developers who were thinking of leaving are using consistently. Maybe they're all Laravel devs now, maybe they're all WordPress devs now. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see the respondents who said they're thinking of, uh, sorry, whether they're likely to keep using Drupal in 12, in 12 months, um, they are overwhelmingly WordPress users. So if you're a WordPress user, statistically, you're more likely to stick with Drupal. On the right-hand side, there really wasn't a breakthrough there. Um, if, you're not, if you're thinking you won't be using Drupal in a year, um, there is no system that you're more likely to be using than any other. Um, we asked respondents if they'd worked on any decoupled or headless projects. This really surprised me because um, I expected this might be 10 or 20 percent, but 44% um, of respondents are working on headless projects. Um, I'm going to do the hands up thing again in the room. How many of you have worked on a headless project in the past 12 months? Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's roughly the same, perhaps a little bit smaller. Um, we asked respondents who they used to host their production websites and we got a lot, a lot of answers. This was a multiple choice. Obviously, a lot of people, just like they're using different IDs or they're different using, using different local dev managers, most of us are using more than one hosting provider, except me, of course, I'm only using one. Um, the variation in answers posed a challenge in how to interpret and collect certain responses. So, for example, um, there, were, there were many responses for all the different kinds of self-hosting, everything from bare metal to Kubernetes to not self-managed Lagoon, but self-managed Kubernetes, um, EKS, ECS, all this sort of stuff. Um, so I just sort of aggregated those all into unspecified self-hosting so that they would uh, effectively show up on this. So globally, um, you can see that AWS is the host that people are using more than anything else. Um, Acquia and Pantheon platform in the top four. Uh, no surprises there. Um, and not surprisingly, when looking at Drupal Pass providers, we see those three providers, um, and there's no clear winners in the hosting game. Uh, the responses locally from the Australia NZ market are quite a bit different. Um, we see that Acquia loses out its top PaaS spot to Amazie, which is likely buoyed by GovCMS, um, and their strong presence in the NZ market. Pantheon also drops quite a few spots down to 5%, presumably because of their late entry into the local market, um, and uh, when compared to providers like Platform and Acquia. Uh, and we see a good representation for locally owned providers like Ironstar, Skipper, and Catalyst Cloud, which is really great to see. So if you're among those users, thank you for buying local. Um, we asked, uh, this is looking back at the global numbers now, um, I thought it would be interesting to see how the major providers change when you look at the organization size. Um, I hosted a, an agency leaders dinner on Tuesday night and we asked the question, based on agency size, where are you hosting and are you partnering with hosting providers? And overwhelmingly larger agencies partner with hosting rather than doing their own hosting. And that sentiment seems to be borne out here as well. Larger organizations are more likely to use a professional Drupal host than trying to host it themselves, even if those larger organizations are more likely to have the scale and capability internally to be able to hire and train that team and, and buy that infrastructure. Um, so if you're if you're in a small company and you're doing your own hosting, there may be data points, there may be some data in there that's worth having a think about. Um, I've got the exact same text for this slide. What are we looking at? How did I get that in there? Let's move on. Um, all right, security controls. We asked uh, which security controls respondents were using to protect their Drupal sites. Um, what you see here is adoption of each control type out of only people who answered this question. There were 143 people, or about 17% of respondents, who didn't answer this question. Whether or not that means that they have no security controls or not, I don't think so. 
Um, what I think that means is that this question is towards the end of the survey, which only took about 10 minutes, but I imagine a fair bit of fatigue is starting to set in at this point. It's great to see that about 44% of respondents are using some form of advanced authentication controls for their Drupal sites, whether that's two-factor authentication or single sign-on. Um, I would love to see that value increase next year. Um, and uh, next year we'll think to expand this to ask about more advanced controls like workstation security, um, since there are more attacks, much more sophisticated attacks that are taking place and using things like workstations and, 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 and that as a, as a, as a vector. Um, but clearly we can be doing more as a community to encourage adoption of even the most basic security controls. Um, if you're interested and in maybe, you know, if you're a dev and you're having a hard time selling the, the time and resources needed in order to do things like um, putting in a WAF or putting in two-factor authentication in your sites. I did a talk at DrupalCon Prague last year that was specifically aimed at non-technical decision makers um, and, and sort of talking about what some of these controls are that they can turn on. I think there was about nine and how relatively straightforward and cost-effective they are and the impact that they'll have on security. Um, so if you, if you, I was, this link is way too long to say out loud, but if you're interested in seeing that. Um, finally, a quick look at web server popularity. Um, this is similar to the way that IDEs broke down um, with two vendors clearly having complete market share. Um, I thought it was interesting to note that there's still a couple of diehard IIS users. Um, uh, I'm sure that's not by choice. Um, and a couple of light speed users. So um, people still are doing PHP on Windows for whatever reason. Um, it's interesting to me to see how Nginx has overtaken Apache as the main web server for Drupal sites. Hopefully, that's going to lead to more Nginx-centric content on Drupal.org, telling people who want to use Nginx how to configure it appropriately for Drupal, because right now, everything's pretty much Apache-focused, even though it doesn't have the majority market share. Uh, that's it for the survey results. Thank you. Um, I think we will definitely be doing this again next year. We learn a tremendous amount in doing it this year. Uh, we're going to publish the results on our website in the next two to three weeks. Um, and we'll be mailing out if you did submit the survey and you signed up with your email address to find out, um, to, to have the results emailed to you when they come out, they should also be coming out in the next two to three weeks. So um, are there any questions? Great question. I don't know. It will obviously be next year. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to share the results at Drupal cons. So it will probably be timed so that it runs maybe two months before DrupalCon Portland or possibly DrupalCon Europe. But the goal is to have it be early in the year. The, the fact that there were other local environment managers other than Lando and DDEV that still have pretty, pretty good usage. Like if we go back uh, to all the way back at the beginning, um, uh, yeah. Lando and DDEV have the main market share, but there's still a lot of people who are doing their own custom Docker installations, a lot of people who are still doing their own LAMP WAMP stacks. So really, um, that, that surprised me. The use of Homebrew surprised me. Doc, Sal and Docker for Drupal, even though those users have suggested like one third of those users are probably gonna disappear. I would have thought it was just gonna be Lando and DDEV with 80% you know, of the respondents only ever really using them. Because those are, by comparison, significantly more mature platforms, in my opinion. I know that's very contentious, but that's what I've seen. No responses from Russia or Ukraine. No, I didn't remove them, no, definitely not. Um, so going back to the, the global charts, um, there, there were, no, Ukraine is in there. Ukraine? It's there. Ukraine, eight responses. No, that's okay. Yeah, it is, it is on the map there. Um, so yeah, eight responses from Ukraine. There were no responses from Russia. I didn't do anything to remove any of that data. I think um, it's probably worth pointing out that that's from people who know what their web server is. So an Acquia customer or even an Amazi customer probably doesn't know exactly what they're running for their web server. Um, excuse me. So it's, 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 you know, if in terms of usage, it's probably different. But I don't think it matters because if, we're, if the intention is to help people use whatever their web server of choice is, those users who know what web server they're using, more of them want resources for Nginx. I'm probably five questions too late for that, but uh, yes. The question was, it's, it's interesting that Nginx is more popular um, than, than Apache.
So the question is, is my aim with this, uh, because I'm making little comments and observations and anecdotes as I go through, and the, so, the, so Murray's question is, am I doing this because I want to influence the results or is it just to report back? And honestly, the answer is both. Um, I, I'm doing this because I needed this data. Um, we, we're building tools for Drupal developers um, and, and it was really important to us. So for example, if we're building a local environment manager and overwhelmingly people are using Apache, our preference for Nginx might not be appropriate. So that was part of the reason for doing it. Um, the, the little anecdotes are partly to just keep things interesting, but also because um, I mean, everyone's got a narrative, everyone's got a story they want to tell. Um, but also the results themselves, I think, um, we're not the only ones building tools for Drupal, we're not the only ones working with Drupal. And I think there are really important insights that we can take out of this. I keep pitching this idea of like, the larger the company is, the less likely they are to do their own hosting. Um, so I think that's, personally, I think that's really important for small organizations that are struggling to do their own hosting and probably not of the scale and experience to be able to do that properly and securely. Um, that's, that's an important message for me personally. Cool. All right, I uh, really appreciate everyone coming along and um, thank you and I, I really hope you enjoy the rest of Drupal South.